Well, time now for the uh, campaign beat. That's our daily roundup of news from the French presidential uh, campaign trail with Florence uh, Villeminot, who joins me. Flo, Here hello to you. There are just 11 days to go before round one. According to the latest polls, there's something of a duel between the centrist uh, Emmanuel Macron and far-right candidate Marine Le Pen. But there's also a duel for third place. There's a duel at the top and a duel at the bottom, according to these polls, for whatever the polls are worth. Of course, uh, we've seen in the past that polls can make mistakes. But let's take a look at these uh, latest polls. You can see uh, Marine Le Pen and Emmanuel Macron, they're tied at 24% at the top. And then this really surprising uh, result, Jean-Luc Mélenchon and François Fillon tied at 18%. Now, some polls uh, put Fillon in front, some polls put uh, Mélenchon in front, but Regardless, it's proof of this incredible scenario uh, that we're witnessing, this surge uh, for uh, Jean-Luc Mélenchon's campaign. He's really skyrocketing in the polls. The idea of a Mélenchon presidency is no longer crazy. Now, uh, what's really interesting is to see how other candidates and their supporters are responding to this uh, prospect. Uh, let's uh, listen to James Creedon, our reporter who's been following Team Fillon. Uh, he was at a meeting in Marseille yesterday. So we're in Marseille, where François Fillon gathered together a crowd of some 5,000 people, four to 5,000 people. Um, but just a few days ago, uh, Jean-Luc Mélenchon, the far-left candidate uh, in the port of Marseille, outdoors, gathered a crowd of about 70,000 people. He's been rising in the polls consistently. He's been the big surprise element in this election. He could now make it into the second round. So here at François Fillon's rally, which, uh, as you can see, is now very much over, I asked uh, a few people uh, some questions about Jean-Luc Mélenchon's rise. I think Jean-Luc Mélenchon is not realistic in his programme, and I think people will see that. It's just like a movement, but it will not be during the vote. I think it will not be true. Five years ago, Jean-Luc Mélenchon was uh, at uh, was uh, at uh, 17 percent in the polls, uh, but uh, he only did uh, 10 percent. I think uh, he is overestimated. People are crazy. There is no difference. There is a big difference between. Fillon and uh, Mélenchon. That woman might think that people are crazy, but a lot of people are bracing themselves for a runoff between Jean-Luc Mélenchon and Marine Le Pen in round two. Apparently, even the president, François Hollande, is concerned about this scenario. He reportedly uh, recently told Le Monde and Le Point that this campaign smells bad. Well, it's been an unprecedented campaign, as you've just been saying there, Flo. A huge number of undecided voters, which means, essentially, Mélenchon could defy uh, these pre-election predictions. It's not the first time he's uh, experienced a pre-election stage, is it? Indeed. You heard that uh, Fillon supporter talking about what happened during the last presidency. So in 2012, he was also riding this, uh, this wave high in opinion polls, but it really crashed on election day. Uh, he ended up coming in fourth. Uh, uh, that guy got a little wrong. It wasn't 10 percent. He got 11 points. 0.01 percent of the vote, which was still pretty good for uh, Jean-Luc Mélenchon. Now, Jean-Luc Mélenchon's team says that this year it's very different. Uh, let's listen to France 24's Siobhan Silk for more. Jean-Luc Mélenchon! He's on a high, but just how much higher can Jean-Luc Mélenchon really go? Maybe to the top if his polling momentum continues. It's true that our horoscope has been looking good the last few days. He already has the best approval rating of any candidate. It's rocketed a massive and record-breaking 19 points in a month. It shows that there's a wave building. We don't know yet how strong it will be. We'll find out on the first round on April 23rd. Mélenchon has run before. In 2012, he finished a fairly distant fourth in the first round, but this time he's a different candidate. Instead of take power, the slogan this year is people power. Last time around, he was a candidate of the Left Front Coalition. This time he has his own new movement, Unsubmissive France, its symbol, the Greek letter Phi. Phi stands for philosophy, the love of wisdom. That's a pretty good manifesto. It's a change in tone compared to five years ago. I'm the sound and the fury. Talk to me about politics. Talk bullshit with the people who want to talk about bullshit. People have had it up to here. They need leaders who tell it like it is. For a long time he was very aggressive. He still can be. But now he's showing a more measured, kinder side. 
plus dans une forme de bienveillance. The once angry man may have calmed down, but his leftist policies haven't been watered down. He's still on the far side of the spectrum, but with the Socialist Party collapse, Mélenchon says he's the candidate to unite all the voters on the left and even attract enough support from unexpected places to cause an electoral upset. Well, Mélenchon surge has been getting a lot of attention in the press as well. It's been getting mixed reactions, though. Not everyone's happy. It depends on where you stand on the uh, political spectrum. Let's take a look, first of all, at the communist paper, L'Humanité, as you can imagine. They're thrilled uh, by what they're seeing. They already see uh, Mélenchon at the Élysée Palace. Mélenchon, the dynamic energy that could change everything. Now, it's a very different story if you look at right-wing papers. They're terrified by the prospect of a Mélenchon presidency. There's some serious Mélenchon bash going on in Le Figaro today. You can see on their front page they're calling him the French Chavez with a crazy program. Of course, he's running on a protectionist policy with heavy public spending. And he's also said that he wants to leave the European alliance to join a Bolivarian alliance with uh, Cuba and Venezuela. Well, like him or not, Mélenchon is, in fact, the most uh, tech-savvy candidate in the election. He certainly is the most 2.0 uh, candidate in this election. He's already used a hologram uh, during one of his rallies, so he could be in two cities at the same time. He's also very active on social media. On YouTube, for instance, he has a whopping 278,000 followers. That's more than Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. He's really understood the importance of Internet and social media in this election, uh, and he has a lot of followers on all those platforms. Speaking of his followers, uh, some far-left uh, French presidential candidate uh, supporters have even created a video game in his honour. This certainly is buzzing uh, this week. It's called Fiscal Combat, and uh, you can take a sneak peek at it uh, behind me. Uh, now, the aim of this game is to bash the rich. Uh, fiscal Combat, uh, you, in this game, you roam the streets pretending to be Mélenchon as he battles uh, different rivals and oligarchs. Uh, the aim is essentially to shake money from these rich people, uh, like the former budget minister, Jérôme Cahuzac. You'll also see the IMF chief, uh, Christine Lagarde. Uh, the aim is to shake these little coins out of them to pay for all of Mélenchon's policies. Apparently, a lot of people have been playing this game this week. So the idea is not to collect money, but to shake it out of people. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, well, if you are interested in the French election, do check out the election compass. Now, it is uh, a tool developed by France 24 in partnership with uh, Vox Pop Labs, calculates how your political views compare with those of the French presidential candidates and can lead to some rather surprising results.